What's going on YouTube? So today we are going to be going over the roster update investments that we have. The roster update is this Thursday. So instead of Friday, it is this Thursday because of a holiday weekend. And that's when season three drops as well. So everything's coming out on Thursday and we're going to be covering the roster update today. So let's go ahead and look into who we are invested in for this roster update just probably like two or three days before the roster update. So honestly, I'm probably just going to hold off on these guys. I'm not going to probably sell any of them. I'm just going to hold them and hope for the best. First up, I want to say who we got out on. So if you guys have been looking at our spreadsheet that is posted uh, in our links and stuff, Zach Nito and Teoscar Hernandez were our last roster update video. They are no longer in the roster update investments. So if you guys invested in those from our first video, we have quick sold all of them, got our stubs back and reinvested. And the first person that we are invested in is going to be Jake Berger. Now, all these stats I updated on August 24th. So they are fairly current. They're not completely current. Obviously, today is the 26th. You're probably seeing this video on the 27th, but they are still pretty current. So Jake Berger, when we look at his stats, let me go over to my spreadsheet. I have it written down. He has 10 hits versus lefties, batting 313 with seven home runs and an ISO of 688. Against righties, he's got 21 hits, batting 309 with six home runs and also an ISO of 309. So when you look at his stats, very low contact versus lefty. Power could see a boost. We got him at 30 stubs. Right now, he's 72 to 350 stubs. Honestly, at 350, if you could sell some of them off at 340, I don't mind doing that because I don't see him getting a plus six to gold. And since we got in on him at 30 stubs, if he goes to a 75, it's profit for us. Now, I wouldn't invest him any longer, obviously, with these later roster update videos. This is basically, do you keep him? or do you sell them? Jake Berger is definitely either a hold or a sell right now at 340 stubs. Obviously, don't quick sell him. He's definitely worth more than that. But if you got Jake Berger early in the investments, definitely sell Jake Berger right now at around 340 stubs. Don't see him going gold this update. A plus six is unlikely, but he is definitely going to get upgraded in my opinion. Next up is going to be Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Now, obviously, he's already a diamond. However, I do expect him to go up to at least an 86, but hopefully higher. Now, we have him on our spreadsheet twice. So if you guys have access to the spreadsheet, why do we have him twice? Well, we invested in him in two different times. The first time we got him, we got him around 3,100. The second time we got him, we got him around 3,300. And that's where we got out on Zach Nito. And we got out on Teoscar Hernandez and we reinvested stubs into Vladimir Guerrero. So we have roughly around 271, actually no, around 200, right? Yeah, 200 of him. So we have 200 Vladimir Guerreros or 271 Vladimir Guerreros. I don't know exactly which one's which on how many we have. I know we have some buy orders on them as well. So I don't know if those are going to go through, but definitely think he can get upgraded. Let's go over his stats real quick. 11 hits versus lefties, batting 478 with three home runs and an ISO of 565. Against righties, he has 28 hits versus righties, batting 368 with five home runs and an ISO of 329. Now, obviously, his contact could possibly get upgraded. He's got pretty good contact, but it could get boosted more. And if you look at his inside edge right now, with a power boost and contact boost versus righties, that would bring him up to an 89. So if he got any type of significant boost, he's going to go uh, basically skyrocket. And that's why I predict him around an 86, 87. Could go to an 89, but I think an 86 and 87 is a good floor for him. If he reaches an 87, he quick sells for 4,500 stubs. So you can make a huge investment even now. If he goes up to an 87, if you get him at 36, but we got him at 33 to 3,100. That's what I would recommend. So if you got him, either sell him at 443, which you're going to get it back around 3,900, or just hold him and hope for the best, which was that's exactly what I'm going to do. 
Not going to sell him. We're going to hold Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and hope that he goes up to an 87 to make the most amount of stubs possible. To get an idea, if he does go to an 87, we will make around 400,000 stubs in profit and make about 1.1 million in total. Now, another guy people have been asking about, I'm not invested in, but we are going to be going over him just real quick because he has been kind of playing hot. I just don't think his price is worth it. He also just got supercharged, so brought his price up even more. And that's going to be Jackson Merrill or Merrill. I don't know how to say his name. But he's got four hits versus lefties, batting 267 with one home run and an ISO of 200. He's got 24 hits versus righties, batting 324 with five home runs and 378 ISO. The problem is he's already got very good contact versus righties. However, his power versus righties could get a boost. And that's where I could see him boost the most is power versus righties because contact and power versus lefties not looking good. Maybe a 267 average, it gets boosted a little bit, but he's only got four hits versus lefties. So he hasn't faced a lot of lefties. So I don't really think they touch his lefty numbers, but they could definitely touch his power versus righties. And that's where I could see him get boosted the most. Maybe he isn't even as clutch if he's hit any, like he's definitely hit some walk-off solo shots for the pot. So, I mean, he could, he could get boosted in the clutch as well with those walk-off uh, home runs. So you never know how they're going to boost his clutch. I don't really rely on clutch and stuff, but it could impact him significantly if they boost his clutch and his power versus righties. But I don't have him. I'm not invested in him. But if you do, just be careful. He's already at an 83 overall price. So he would have to go to 84 overall for you to make any stubs. But if you invested in him early, I still think he could possibly be a sell right now. So you don't have to risk it. Or you could risk it and hold. I think he's a, a risky hold right now. All right, next up in today's video is another big investment that I have, and that's going to be Blake Snell. Let's look at his numbers real quick. Pretty solid. 3.69 hits per nine, 14.4 Ks per nine, 0 0.3 home runs per nine, and 2.9 walks per nine. Can definitely see a walks per nine boost. Obviously, a Ks per nine boost, even a hits per nine boost. I think he's a solid plus one, if not a plus two to an 83. Could he get diamond? He very well could get diamond. I just don't like to take that. He's a risky diamond play, but I think a safe like plus one, maybe even a safe plus two. His price, 900. So he's basically almost predicted to go to an, an 82. I'm hoping he hits that 83 and we make a lot more. An 84 would be amazing for us as we have 335 Blake Snells. Now, another one's going to be Sean. I can't say his last name. Mania, Mania, Mania. I don't know. Can't say his last name, but he's more of a risky one because I think his last start wasn't the greatest when it comes to Ks or hits. But 5.81 hits per nine, 10.7 Ks per nine. He's only got 62 Ks per nine. 0 0.6 home runs per nine and two walks per nine. So definitely his walks and Ks per nine could get a boost. Does his hits per nine give a boost with a 5.81? I do not know, but I think his Ks per nine and walks per nine could get a boost. And the reason I like him, I know he's a 75, but like I said, these were early investments. We got him at quick sell value. Quick sell value for a 75 is 50 stubs. We got him at 53 stubs. So if he goes to a 76 overall, we make stubs. I'm not saying he's going to go gold. I'm just saying that he has a very good chance of going to a 76 or 77. And I'll take those low end profits. I'm expecting him to go to a 77. That will net us 100 stubs right there. So it's literally doubling my stubs for Sean right there. So I invested 26. I make 23 and we double our stubs. Not a crazy amount. I could have bought more of them, obviously, but I did not. I like making more bigger, riskier investments in the silver. But ideally, someone who invested like two th into 2,000 of him can make a significant amount of stubs. I think he goes to a 77 in this roster update. And last but not least for this roster update video, we are going to have Bailey Ober? Uber? No, it's going to be Ober, right? Ober? Ober? I don't know. But we got Bailey. Here we go. 4.36 hits per nine, 9.5 Ks per nine. So I know his last start kind of ruined his Ks per nine. It was close to Blake Snell at like around 12. 
Now it's 9.5. Uh, 0.5 home runs per nine and 2.5 walks per nine. This might be one of the riskier one because of his Ks per nine, but he's also only got 66 Ks per nine. He's got decent walks per nine. Hits per nine is lower than Sean's, but higher than Blake's. So it could get upgraded. But Ks per nine is where we want to see him. Ks per nine is where we want to see him get like a plus 10 to Ks per nine would be kind of nice or a plus five at least. I see him going 82. That, that's what I'm kind of predicting. I think he goes 82. He might not. He might not move at all. In that case, hopefully he has a good next three weeks for the next roster update because I'm not selling him. You can get in him around. He's still only around like 170 stubs above quick sell if you still want to invest in him. So it's not a bad investment because if he goes plus one, you still make profit. Do you make a lot? No. But if he goes plus two, plus three, that would be where we're going to make a lot of profit. We got him, I believe, at quick sell value. Close, close. We got him around 710 stubs. So we got him 100 above quick sell. That's why I'm holding him. If I sell him, I'm pretty much just breaking even if I sell him at 800 stubs. So we're going to go ahead and hold him and hope for the best. Another. Big investment, 318 of them. That's 600, no, that's 213,000 stubs that we invested into Bailey. Obviously, Vlad is our biggest investment. We invested 1.5 million stubs just into Vlad. So if Vlad does not go up, we are, uh, we're going to be sad. We're going to be sad. I don't think he goes down, though, so I think we'll be okay. But if he doesn't go up, I'm still going to be very, very sad. But that is the roster update. Obviously, I don't give you guys details on other players. I only give you guys details on who I'm actually invested in. Because if I go out and give you details on everyone, that's kind of dumb in my opinion. If I'm not investing myself, why would I tell you to invest? That's the way I look at it. I give you guys who I'm invested in, not who I think you should invest in or who I'm lying about. Oh, go invest in this guy even though I'm not doing it. That's that's so two-faced, it's unbelievable. But anyways, if you guys did enjoy the video, subscribe, turn notifications on, comment down below if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any other players you guys want info on, put them in the comments down below over on the YouTube side. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.